After nearly two years of continuous use, my wife's M1 Mac Mini is filthy. I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks good on the outside, but the intake vents on the bottom are almost completely clogged with crud and there's literally dust falling out of the exhaust vent. So it's time to clean this M1 Mac and to do it, Briggy sent me their M1. So I guess this tech YouTuber is gonna do a vacuum review. I mean, that's gotta be a first. Right? Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and this is my wife's M1 Mac Mini, which has been running pretty much nonstop for the past 20 months. And here in the high desert plains of Colorado at over 7,000 feet in elevation, the air is thin, arid, and full of super fine dust. Now, even though this M1 Mac is whisper quiet, the fan still runs continuously and has done a great job pulling in a whole lot of that dust. It's actually gotten to the point where the Mac Mini is getting warm to the touch under just basic workload. So today I'm gonna show y'all how to disassemble and clean the 2020 M1 Mac Mini. And to do it, Briggy sent me their three-in-one cordless handheld vacuum, the M1. Now, to be honest, when Briggy reached out and asked if I wanted to check out their vacuum, I almost sent the canned auto reply that I typically send to all the offers to review things from blenders to luxury handbags. But it just so happened, I was working on the Ryzen Mini PC vs M1 Mac Mini video, which is when I noticed how dirty the Mac was getting. Now, normally, I'd just open this thing up and blow it out with my air compressor, but that's not something I'd show you how to do because if you don't know what you're doing and just hit this thing with like a 200 PSI air jet, you can permanently damage it. So I'm gonna see how well this little vacuum slash air duster works in cleaning this and how safely we can do it. So the reason I accepted the Briggy is, yes, it's wireless and compact, but besides having a suction side like any vacuum, it has a blower side, again, like any vacuum, but Briggy designed it and provided accessories to leverage the exhaust as a dust blower. It's like a rechargeable can of air, which is something you should never use. It's horrible stuff, bad for the environment and a waste of money. Stop blowing difluoroethane, trifluoroethane, and butane around. Okay, rant over. Let's quickly go over the tools needed to disassemble the Mac Mini. Now, I have a complete iFixit kit for this, but all you need is a Torx T6H and a Torx 10H bit, a plastic spudger or old credit card, and if you don't have fingernails, a pair of tweezers can be handy. I also grabbed a few soft bristle brushes. I may need these to help with cleaning. And finally, while the risk of actually damaging anything in the Mac with static discharge is almost non-existent, for best practices, I'm using a grounding strap and now I'm grounded. Now, I'm gonna clean the Mac as I go, so I'll start by seeing if I can vacuum out the dust that's clogging up the intake vent. So let's connect the little bristle brush nozzle to the Briggy and see if we can suck this out. It seemed to work, so let's remove the bottom cover, which can be done by sliding this old gift card underneath it and just sliding it around. And that'll take the whole thing off. Again, I'm just gonna go ahead and dust out all this stuff. Okay, now to remove the metal cover, we're gonna use our T6H bit and remove these six screws. And now our Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna is connected to the main board with a wire to this cover. So I wanna just carefully rotate it out of the way. Then we're gonna use the same T6A to remove this little retention screw here. And then we can lift this wire right off. All right, next thing I'm gonna remove is the fan and there are four screws that hold this down. And if I flip this up, there's a small ribbon cable here holding that in, and I can just carefully pull that out. Now I'm gonna switch to my T10H driver and remove the main board. So 
two screws here to disconnect the power cable i have to untape it and now here if you have some thumbnails you can just pull that right out now to remove this little ribbon cable there's a little lever on the back that you just want to pop up and you can carefully just pull that ribbon cable out and now the main board should just slide right out of the back last thing to pull out of the case is the power supply so back to the t6h bit and remove these three screws pull the cable out of its cable shroud remove this metal cap and this retention clip And now you can twist the power connector 90 degrees and slide the power supply out of the case. Okay, now you can break this down farther. The speaker, the IO cover, even the heat sink can be removed, but for our purposes, this should be far enough. So let's clean this thing. And I'm gonna start with the fan because while well, it's the worst, now I could just try to blow this out with the blower, but I don't want to blow dust all over my studio so i'm gonna try to suck it out and to do that i'll use the hose attachment for the briggy and one of my paint brushes to push the dirt out of the fan blades as i suck it, the dust up okay now that i got most of it i can blow the rest out but when you use compressed air to blow out a fan don't let the fan spin free. Fans are only rated for a certain RPM, and if you spin the fan too fast, you can damage it. So I'm gonna just hold the fan hub as I blow out the remaining dust. Well, worked pretty good. So I'm gonna use the same technique to clean the rest of the Mac. I'm gonna brush out and suck up as much of the dust and blow the rest away. The vacuum made quick work of cleaning the mat components and once I had all the dust removed I finished up by cleaning all the surface areas with a cloth and some isopropyl alcohol mostly to remove my fingerprints. I reassembled the mat simply by doing the opposite of what I did to take it apart. To finish it off I gave the whole chassis an alcohol wipe down and because the bottom panel is getting worn I added four 3mm silicone feet to the mat to keep it from sliding around. Hopefully the added height will also help with the Bluetooth signal. And after all is said and done, my wife now has a cleaner, cooler running Mac. But y'all have questions. And I know the first one is, didn't I void the Mac warranty by taking it apart? Well, the initial warranty is expired, but even if it hadn't, and I prelude this by saying this only applies to the US, you'll have to look up the laws for your location. But in the US, companies don't provide warranties out of the kindness of their hearts. It's required by a law known as the Magnuson Moss Act, which also allows for consumer level reasonable and necessary maintenance, which is defined as operations which the consumer reasonably can be expected to perform or have performed, which are necessary to keep the product performing its intended function and operating at a reasonable level of performance. Now, of course, there are gray areas. If you break or damage the product during the maintenance, well, then you have a problem. As far as manufacturers extended warranties that aren't required by law, like Apple Care, well, those are controlled and regulated by the company, so you can easily void them. With all that said, I will say that I really didn't need to break the Mac down as far as I did to clean it just as well as I did. At a minimum, removing the bottom panels and just the fan to clean it like I did and then I could have just blown the rest of the dust from the heat sink out the back of the computer and sucked up the dirt from inside the chassis. So if you don't want to risk pulling the logic board and the PSU out of the chassis, 
you probably don't need to. As far as the bridgey, it worked okay. The force of the suction was a bit low for what I needed, but it did get a lot of the dust, and the blower with the blow nozzle was just about right. Strong enough to get the dust out of the nooks and crannies, but not strong enough to worry about blowing SNDs off the board, which can happen with strong jets of air. I had a bit of a problem with the brush wand attachment in that the brush was too loose and kept sliding down to the plastic wand. I solved that with some tape. The brush was the perfect softness though, good enough to brush dust away while not knocking off capacitors. I do wish there was a brush attachment for the flexible hose that could be handy, especially in larger computers. Now at $49, is it worth the investment? Well, if you just have a single Mac mini to clean, probably not. You can get pretty good cleaning kits for 10 to 15 bucks for that. But for someone like me, it's great and will pay for itself by the end of the day. In my household, I have two more Macs to clean, two gaming PCs, an HTPC, my laptop, my server, two gaming consoles, routers, network switches, and all the peripherals that go along with that. This and a Swiffer is all I need for the reasonable and necessary maintenance for all the setups in my house. What would you clean with the Bridgie M1? Let me know in the comments. I hope this was helpful. If you thought so, be sure to hit that like and maybe consider subscribing. And I hope to catch you in the next one.